All right, to present our first award, please welcome a man who helped bring a first ever NBA championship to the city of Dallas, the head coach of the Dallas Mavericks, Rick Carlisle. What's up? You guys hear me? I'm gonna do something I do with my team every once in a while, all right? When I say ready, you're gonna give me one clap. It's gotta be simultaneous. Ready? Let's do it again. Ready? All right, give me two claps. Ready? Give me four claps. Ready? Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Has anybody ever seen a better 90 seconds of basketball than last night when Dirk Nowitzki checked into the All-Star game? Can we hear it? <laughs> bang, bang, bang. That was amazing. And if you see Nancy, make sure you give her a, uh, her props. She uh, just participated in the ESPN body issue, if you can't tell by her unbelievable figure right now. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. We'll give up more than four claps for that. One, I did tell them, I did. The great thing about Nancy, uh, there are many great things about Nancy, but I have a 14-year-old daughter, and I always want to be able to tell her that anything she can do in life is possible, whether she's a female or a male. And Nancy's a great example of that. She was the first ever female coach of a men's professional basketball team. She just kicked ass in the big three. Somehow or other, she kicked Dr. J's ass in the finals and talked him into coming here for this, which is the magic of Lady Magic. Well, I'm gonna to talk to you about a guy that was such a great inspiration for so many people, myself included. Um, Julius Irving was one of the great artists in the history of sport. Everybody has some kind of Julius Irving story. Uh, Rick Barry must have many Rick, uh, uh, Julius Irving stories. Um, I'll get to mine in a second. A little bit of history though. In 1976, the NBA was interested in acquiring and merging with the ABA for only one reason. And that reason was Julius Irving. He was a player of unbelievable style, uh, great substance, he was a winner, he had an aura, he had a phenomenal charisma. And that merger was done to get Julius into the NBA and to bring four teams on board. But the by, one of the byproducts of that was that a lot of great ABA players that would not have been noticed otherwise came onto the big stage. Uh, many became Hall of Famers. Uh, in fact, one of Julius's great teammates and a close friend of mine, Bobby Jones, just became a finalist for the Naismith Hall of Fame uh, two days ago when it was announced at the All-Star Game. And so this is a guy that's had a, a great reach on, on our game. Uh, my story is, uh, is a little bit different. When I first saw Dr. J play, I said, Oh my God, I've never seen a guy dunk a basketball like that. I mean, this is just a breathtaking thing to watch. Uh, I was such a big fan, I talked my mom and dad into taking me on a trip from Ogdensburg, New York, in a car. We left, we went to Buffalo, New York to watch the 76ers play against the Buffalo Braves at that time. We stayed in the Holiday Inn, we stayed over and then we drove to Philadelphia the next day and we watched uh, the 76ers play against the Cle Cleveland Cavaliers. And then two days later, we drove to Boston to watch the Cavaliers play the Boston Celtics. Now, in those days, I was the biggest 76ers fan going because of Dr. J. And I was a little ambivalent about the Celtics trip because, you know, these were the guys that were always going against, uh, going against the Sixers, and it was always a huge rivalry. Well... You know, in, in 1977, Dr. J did another great thing for me. He actually helped me pass a test. Now, in New York State, they have something called the Regents, which is um, 
was a standardized test that was taken at the end of the year. And on the English Regents in 1977, my essay was about how the 76ers acquired the rights to Julius Irving and how he, he went on to basically change the NBA by being acquired by Fitz Dixon, who was the owner of the Sixers at the time. And I actually passed the test, which was pretty amazing. So let's give Dr. J a hand for helping me pass my Regents exam. But this guy had just an amazing effect on so many people that watched the game of basketball. It, was, it had become artistry and not just putting a ball in the hole. I went through high school, prep school, uh, mid-major college, transferred to Virginia, had a couple decent years uh, with the great Ralph Sampson, and ended up getting drafted in the NBA by none other than the Boston Celtics, who I never liked. And they, they had just come off a championship in 1984, so I didn't think there was any way in the world that I was possibly going to be able to make that team. Well, anyway, I get into training camp, and my roommate was another kid from Princeton um, who was another, another guy like myself with a limitless lack of ability. And we were in the Fenway Howard Johnsons in Boston in training camp, and his name was Moon Mullen. And every night, Moon was on the phone with a guy named Johan, who was a guy from Sweden who was trying to recruit him to play professionally in Sweden. And he was trying to hold out because our second exhibition game, if we both made it to that game, was, was against the Sixers. And he just said, listen, I got to play against Dr. J. <laughs> I got to get, get out there against Dr. J. And so the two of us were, you know, in this whole thing. I was trying to make the league. He was trying to hang with Dr. J and, and go against him for a couple of possessions. And in the long run, what happened was Moon got in for a couple minutes against Doc. I ended up by some miracle making the Boston Celtics. And one of the most uh, prescient moments in my career up to that point was we were playing the Sixers in Philadelphia. And before the game, all the players come out and they're shooting around and stuff like this. And I had never had an interac interaction with Julius. Uh, our first game was played in Boston, and there was a brawl in that game. Um, and so we, 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 we wouldn't have had a happy exchange in that game. But my ball goes bouncing over to Julius Irving in the pre-pre-game warm-ups. And he grabs my ball. He looks at me. He goes, how you doing, Rick? I said, shit. This guy... <laughs> Julius Irving just said hello to me and acknowledged me. That was, that was how much larger than life he was as a player. Uh, he was an MVA, M MVP in both leagues, and, and a two-time MVP in the ABA and an, an MVP in the NBA. And when he won the title in 83, I think a lot of people felt about him the way Dirk felt. They felt about Dirk when he won the title here in 2011. Please help me welcome the 2019 recipient of the Nancy Lieberman Charities Trailblazer Award, the one and only Julia Serving. How's everybody doing out there? You guys okay? We had a nice dinner, uh, fantastic entertainment. Uh, having the students up here who were the scholarship winners, that was very empowering for us and for them. And uh, obviously having Nancy here and the, and the power team, it was a little rubbing it in because, you know, we, we played them in the semifinals because I'm a big three coach too have a team called Tri-State. So we were two wins away from that trophy. And uh, they took us down and then went on to validate. So I was really happy that, uh, that, that they won, um, especially for Nancy. Um, you know, with their team, they had, 
they are guys who you know, have so much character, and you can see how they responded uh, to their success. You know, they were genuinely uh, appreciative of the opportunity that they were given and the fact that they went out and pulled it off. So they're going to be a great threat uh, next year. And we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, starting in June. Uh, the Trailblazer Award. Okay, just thinking about, you know, what that means or what it should mean. Uh, it ob obviously has something to do with paving the way for others. And uh, you don't become a trailblazer unless somebody has paved the way for you. So the first thing I started thinking about when I, when I was asked to come uh, back in August uh, and asked to accept the Trailblazer Award, you know, was the very many people, all the many people who uh, played a role in, in my life, in my, in my early years. You know, Nancy told a story of coming to my basketball camp and me patting her on the head. I don't remember ever patting her on the head, but I do, I do remember that at the end of the week, we gave an award to the best camper, and it was that lady right over there. You know, she was, she was the best. And this was not a girls' camp, this was a co-ed camp. <laughs> so she was competing against boys and men and women, you know, uh, her age. And uh, anything, you know, we asked her to do uh, sh without hesitation. And even when the kids were punished and they had to go and sit on the wall, you know, everybody who's played sports, who played basketball anyway, you know that one of the punishments is you have to go over and you have to put your back against the wall and get in a squatting position, and then you have to just stay there. And then af after a little while, your knees start to quiver, <laughs> your body starts to shake, and either you, you go down because you can't stand up, and she could outlast all of them. I don't know if you could do it now, but you probably can, right? <laughs> yeah. But there were people, um, I had a big three. I had a guy named Ray Wilson, a guy named Chuck McElwain, and a guy named Earl Mosley. And they were, they, they were, they were like my big three. Uh, middle school, uh, junior high school, and senior high school, and even in college. You know, those three gentlemen, they just were my role models, um, showed me right from wrong after telling me, and uh, over and over, show me, tell me, show me, tell me. Uh, they were the epitome of consistency. They're all gone now. And uh, they were my trailblazers. And they instilled in me with their mentorship uh, that spirit of sharing and saying, hey, you know, we're not just telling you this for you. We're not just showing you this for you. You have to share it with others. And, uh, and, I, and I've tried to do that. You know, I've tried to be uh, a good steward. Uh, my life has been far from perfect, but I've tried to be a good, good steward, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually. Uh, you know, I've been blessed with a big family, you know, four sons, three daughters, have uh, multiple grandkids. And um, that responsibility at this time in my seventh decade on the planet, because I've been around since 1950, uh, I can, can just, you know, proudly say that uh, the work that's been done, this is an acknowledgement of it being a good job. This is one of the rewards of it being a good job, uh, getting a, um, an acknowledgement. You know, not the, not the physical trophy per se, but just an acknowledgement, acknowledgement and a recognition uh, by a special person, a special person in my life and all of your lives uh, who is just trying to do it right and, and trying to do the right thing. So, so in accepting this, you know, let me just uh, humbly say that uh, I've enjoyed uh, the journey here, and it's been a little bit of a journey, and I'm going to share it with you a little bit, because uh, in August when I did my podcast, I asked Nancy to uh, be on my podcast, and she said, sure. And uh, maybe a couple of days later, she said, you know what, you know, could you come to my event? And I, I really felt personal about it, and I felt honored, and I felt obligated. And I said, yeah, I'll be there. And then we've had 
this subtle correspondence, you know, since August about the event with her consistently reminding me <laughs> of when the date was. And then I recognized that um, it was the day after the All-Star game. <laughs> I said, okay, but I'm going, because I said I'm going. Uh, it's the day that I have uh, two committee meetings on the board that I'm at <laughs> in Tyson's, Maryland. But we got those taken care of on the phone uh, by calling in. You know, technology is great. And then the actual board meeting is tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. So I'll be on the phone <laughs> talking to the people at GTT at uh, 7 a.m. But I would not have traded uh, anything that would have uh, disrupted being a part of tonight because I know how special it is to her. Yes. And if it's special to her, it's special to me. And with that, I'm going to take my trophy and I'm going to keep on moving because I think we're going to do something else a little later. Thank you.